Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is set the scene and I wanted to create a tiny house scene but then also incorporate the spinner square pop-up attached to the side of the house so that the greeting label could also be elevated and have a little movement to it. I'm starting with the tiny house and this beautiful piece of Cartabella farmhouse market paper. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. The assembly of the tiny house pop-up is really simple. It's made all the score lines to just create a little three-dimensional house out of that long piece and then it has two fold under tabs. There is also a side tab and that's what's used to connect the house together. So just a strong adhesive on that side tab. I like my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. Once connected, then I like to fold the house down in both directions just to work all the folds. The die that cuts the house also cuts the roof support and that has been scored so that there are tabs on the side and then two tabs at the top. And it's the side tabs that are sized and spaced to fit perfectly from peak to peak on the house itself. So just a little adhesive on one of the tabs line up the edge right along the edge of the house and the point right up at the top. Then I put adhesive on the other tab and line it up and attach it to the other side of the house. And again, just the edge just goes right along the edge and the point right at that little corner. Once the tabs are attached, I like to collapse the house in the opposite direction and give them a good pinch that way as well. The tiny house pop-up has a cool feature on the roof die in that it is also a stamp. So it has a special stamp layer in it and it is optional to use it, but you can just brush that with any type of ink. I'm just using a little distress ink cube because it's easy to get in there with that cube and coat the whole die with the ink. And then you just place that die onto your usual die cutting sandwich and roll it through the machine and it's going to stamp and die cut and score all at the same time. And since the roof die was small enough, I just grabbed my little small easy cuts machine for that die cutting. I do recommend that you keep a rag handy and just maybe a squirt bottle of water. It doesn't need any kind of harsh chemicals or anything to clean up, just a little water and just dry off the die and take the ink off. The roof is now going to attach to those tabs at the top of the house. And I think it's easiest to do that in the flat position I just add some adhesive to one of the tabs and then I just open up the roof, get that tab in there right in the fold and I'm just trying to center the house so that I have an equal amount of roof overhang at the front and the back of the house. And then once the right tab is on, then I'll do the left one, just my strong adhesive at the top of the tab and then just keeping everything flat, I can fold the roof down and attach it. Once my glue sets up, then my roof is attached. I'm actually able to open up the house and collapse it the other way so the tabs at the bottom line up. In the finished cards, those tabs will be at the back, which makes this the front of the house. There is an assembly video on the tiny house pop-up, so I don't want to spend all the time showing all the decorations, but I was just going to show that I used the chimney and one of the flower boxes to create a little chimney for the top. Then I'm just going to add adhesive on the little fold under tab and choose a spot on the roof to attach it. I just used pattern paper for the chimney, but there is an optional brick stencil on that die. I thought a little green along the bottom would look pretty kind of like grass, so I'm taking one of our Border Blends Argyle Thin Borders and just trimming off the bottom scallop so that it is a flat edge. And then I just lined the bottom of the house with that little grassy edge. And I've also added all of the doors, windows, flower boxes, and flowers. With our dies, you always choose your own card size. And for today's card, I'm just going to do a standard A2. I've chosen a heavier green cardstock and cut it to 8.5 by 5.5 and, and scored it in the center for folding. And then two pattern paper panels, which are each just a little bit smaller than the panels inside the card. I'm not gluing my paper down yet, I'm just determining where they're going to end up in the finished card and then using temporary tape to hold them to each other. Because my idea is to actually cut an oval out of the pattern paper and let the green be underneath the house. So then now I can remove the pattern paper and run it through my die cutting machine and then remove the little oval halves. 
So all I've done there is basically reduce a layer because I don't have to then layer green oval on top of the pattern paper. I can just let the green shine through from underneath. Okay, I don't wanna attach my house inside the card yet because I'm going to do that secondary pop-up for this card, which is our spinner square. Okay, so I've cut the mechanism of the spinner square and I'm going to start with the mountain folds along the long section. There are three of them, one, two, three. And then normally I would do something with this upper section, but for this card, I'm actually going to cut it off. I'm only going to use the lower section of the spinner square. And to figure out where to stop my cut, I'm actually going to work that diagonal fold so that I can see the corner. And then I'll just take my scissors and cut from where it's attached to that corner and remove the upper platform of the spinner square. Okay, to make the spinner square portion of this mechanism, I need to work those diagonal folds, which I've already done, but I just fold it down and then work those diagonals in both directions. Then I open it and then push so that the triangles collapse into the piece and they'll just take the square with it for now. There are really good full assembly videos on the spinner square. So if this is too quick of a little tutorial on it, you can always go watch those videos. But you put adhesive in the triangle that's underneath the perforation. You fold the square over and into the glue. And it's just the right side of the square that gets attached. The left side actually spins out to the front of the piece. So that's kind of how it works. As the card opens, it's going to spin that little square. And for this card, I'm going to attach that spinner square mechanism to the side of the house. Okay, so right away I realized I didn't need that flower box there kind of in the way as an extra layer. So I took the flower box off and then I'm going to coat my tab with adhesive, a strong adhesive. And I want the bottom of the tab to be along the bottom of the house. And in my case, I just decided to center it so it just goes up to about halfway through the window. And then I decided the green tab looked a little glaring on the side of the house. So I went to a scrap of the same wood grain pattern paper and then put another strip of green along the bottom. And then I reconstructed the half window and flower boxes by just gluing them above and below the mechanism. So figuring out where I want that house to go, I decided I'm going to cheat a little bit closer to the front of the oval in the popped up position that gives me more room on my spinner square to have something attached to it. So I've made a pencil mark, then I need to collapse the house down so that the tabs are over the top of each other. So if they're side by side, that's not correct. They need to be on top of each other. And it is the left side that I want to attach first. So I add my strong adhesive to the tab underneath the house on the left side and then I just go in there and make sure the corner of the house is right on my pencil line and that the edge of that tab is lined up perfectly with the fold of the card and it's the bottom tab that I'm attaching right now on the left side of the house. When I attach the other tab of the house I'm also going to attach the tab of the spinner square so I want to make sure that's in the closed position which is where I have the tapered tab and then the panel next to it both visible. If I could only see the tapered tab, that's incorrect. I need to make sure that I can see both the tapered tab and the panel next to it in the closed position. And then I'm going to add my adhesive to both tabs. So the tapered tab at the bottom of the house and the tapered tab at the end of the spinner square. So here and here. Then making sure everything stays nice and flat, I close the right side of the card against the exposed adhesive. It's really important that you give your glue a chance to set up before you open the card because it's going to pull against those tabs pretty hard that first time. So just go really slowly as you open it the first time to make sure that the glue has set and that all the tabs are adhered. Sometimes as you close it, that left corner of the roof doesn't want to slide under easily and you have to give it a little help. One way to fix that so that it will always want to slide in is just to use your bone folder or something to add just kind of a natural curve to that little corner and then it will always hit the card and want to slide closed. And then the right side of my house, if I want to add a little curve to the right side, then as it hits the spinner square, it will just naturally slide into that closed position. My glue is holding nicely, but I'm kind of asking a lot of the house because it's also got to pull the spinner square up. So I decided to reinforce my tabs underneath the house with a staple. So now's the time to do it because I haven't decorated the front of the card or the back. For the spinner square, the adhesive is just going to go on the front half of the square itself. 
and then I've assembled an oval frame from our slim frames set and I want to place that in the closed position so that I can make sure that I keep it within the card when the card is closed. So I'm going diagonal with it, sort of in line with the square itself in the closed position, keeping it in the card. And then as I open the card, the spinner square will spin it to horizontal. So just kind of a fun effect of elevating and giving a little movement to the greeting block. I've assembled a tree out of our tiny trees pop-up and I'm going to use that to attach to the back of the house. So just glue along the bottom of the tree on the front face and then I want to make sure that I attach that to the right side of the house and tilt it a little bit to the right and then I just have to carefully check and make sure that it stays in the card, that it's out of the fold and that the tree foliage is not catching on the roof of the house. So I have to be willing to move that if I've chosen a poor position. And then I just had fun combining the decorator pieces out of both the tiny house pop-up and the tiny trees. I added a stone path in front of the door, mixed the flowers from both sets for some flowers on the ground. I also completely covered the tree in flowers and a heart, added a tire swing and a bird, all of that from the tiny trees pop-up. The greeting is the hello from ward set six. And then as I was looking at it, I thought, well, that height of the hello greeting is just perfect to be able to suspend a butterfly charm. So what I did is I used the butterfly charm out of our backyard charm set and just cut it twice and then glued those back to back. And that way I would have a hole on both sides. And with two holes, I was able to suspend the butterfly using jump rings off of the edge of the label. Now in my excitement to add this, I didn't pre-think about what would happen when I closed the card and oopsie, the butterfly sticks out of the card, but it's okay because I can just tuck it under and then it will be hidden when the card is closed. My favorite way to make card fronts is just to use my leftover materials and make a simple lead in. So the same pattern papers and a ribbon bow and then another slim frame, this time just decorated with the same color pieces that are on the front of the house. So just kind of like a simple little lead in that gives a hint as to what's inside. And then since I had a staple showing on the back of the card, I went ahead and added a panel of pattern paper to the back as well. My finished card is just a standard A2, so a regular envelope, easy to mail. I love this little scene that's created and the addition of the spinner square just allows for the greeting to have a little bit of motion as well. And obviously the tiny house pop-up works perfectly when you need a house card, you know, for welcome to the neighborhood or welcome home or we've moved or an invitation, but don't think of it quite so literally. It really is just a great scene builder. So for any occasion, any scene, you could put a cute little decorated house in there just to say hello, thinking of you, congratulations, happy birthday, happy Mother's Day, happy Father's Day. It doesn't have to be literally some kind of house theme to use this die. Check the description box below this YouTube video for a link to the blog post where you will find pictures of this card as well as links to all of the wonderful scene cards by our talented design team. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.